this segment, I'm going to take a look at using crystals to both fill and outline an object. And so to get started, I'll go ahead and just create a simple ellipse shape. And once I'm done, I let go of the tool and it becomes automatically selected. And because that object's selected, I can look over to the object properties and see what um, properties have been applied. And right now we can see that the outline tab for this object is set for a running stitch. And I could choose to apply crystals instead of the running stitch by just choosing crystals. So there you have it. You can see the crystals have been applied. And maybe I'll zoom in a little closer. So you can see that crystals have been applied along that, around that shape. And because I chose crystals, the settings along the object properties are now specific to the crystals. And I guess the first thing is I can control the offset. So if I wanted to push these crystals outside of the shape, maybe there's some embroidery inside of the shape that I don't want the crystals to be touching, I could choose offset and choose, let's say, why don't we put five millimeters offset and you see it pushed those crystals out beyond the shape. You can reduce that if you want. Maybe we'll go with three millimeters. And so you can see how it works. Now, I can also control the spacing, the distance between the crystals. So it's set at one millimeter. If I want to put it to two millimeters, it's going to give me more space between the crystals. You get to choose the palette, the style of crystals that you're planning to work with. And right now we have the default, couple of different default palettes that are in, available to work with. So you choose your palette. And then you need to choose the size. So there's a whole list of different sizes available that you could work with. And so you choose your size. And I'll just choose the first one on the list here. And then you can choose, based on the palette and the size, the color um, of, the, of the crystal. So right now it's set for like a light cyan. If I wanted to, I could change it to be like this purple color although that doesn't show real well on my kind of denim fabric, but I could go with the blue crystal or whatever. And you get to choose exactly what color your crystal is. And that's basically how it works. So when you choose a crystal outline, there's not too many things that you have to control. Um, you do have the ability. So right now, this is an object and it has a crystal outline. It is possible to choose separate to crystals. And what that will do is it'll take this object, which is now an object with crystals outlining it, and it'll separate each crystal into its own object that you could then um, make fine tune adjustments. You know, this object works really well. It's a nice even oval, but sometimes there's reasons. And I'll, I'll talk a little bit more in this particular video about the reasons why you may want to separate the crystals. But just to demonstrate it, I'll click on separate the crystals. And by the way, just notice even in my sequence manager, we have simply one object. When I choose separate to crystals, look, now there's 59 objects and each one is one crystal. So if I unselect by clicking away, zoom in on the air, on my design space and show you that I can click and actually select one crystal now. And if I wanted to, I could move the location of that crystal for you know, there's various reasons why you may want to be able to do that. Select the crystal and move its location. So I'll kind of build upon that. So that's the concept. And notice now, if I try and select my oval, that it's not actually even attached to those crystals. Um, I still have the oval object that I had used to have a crystal outline, but actually now my outline set to none and my fill set to none. So I have this outline, but it actually has no embroidery stitches or crystals at all. And then I've got all these crystals that I created in the shape of that outline. Now, what I'm going to do is I'll come back to the shape. And this time, instead of applying an outline, which I, mean, I could use, I could apply another crystal outline to it if I wanted to. But I'll leave outline set for none. Oh, I can leave it on. That's fine. Why not? So we'll have a crystal outline on the shape. And now we're going to go to the fill, crystal fill of this shape. So I'll choose crystal fill. And so the crystals fill in that shape. And just to help them separate from the outline, I'll choose their different colors. So we'll go with a nice bright blue. And so if I click off and I look at it, you can see that I've got crystals filling in the light blue and crystals outlining in the sort of aquamarine blue. Now I'm going to select this object again just by clicking on it. 
and taking a look at the fill tab for crystals we have some of the very similar settings that we did for um, crystal outlines so I still have to um, choose well first of all I've got settings and what I have that's new is the style of fill this is going to be very similar to the style of fill that we've looked at for the array um, but what's similar is I still choose the palette of crystal that we're going to work with choose the size of crystal that we want to work with and choose the color and shape of the crystal that we want to work with now beyond that I have different choices for the fill so right now it's filled on what's known as shape fit if I choose for example rectangle it changes the way that the crystals fill in the shape the pattern that is used to fill in that shape if I change it to circular it's going to change it to a circular pattern if I change it to contour we get a contour pattern and if I change it to single line you get a single line down the center of your shape if you change it to well shape fit we looked at if you if you change it to line fit you're going to get rows and columns and so a, these are different styles of ways that you can fill them in fill in a shape with crystals now so continuing to look at that um, and if you've already watched the segment on the array then these are going to be very similar so why don't we go with rectangle to start and with rectangle I have all of these different things that I can control over how these crystals are getting placed together so first of all there's the offset so if I want to I can offset the crystals and if I go in here and put in let's for example say two millimeters it pushes the crystals two millimeters towards the outside of the shape if I want to maybe make sure they don't go to the outside maybe I want to give a negative number I'll go negative two and it'll push the crystals to the inside of my shape now the next one is your horizontal and vertical spacing which are both currently set at one millimeter um, if I change those let's change the horizontal spacing to be two millimeters and it's going to give us more distance between each row of stitches and if I change my vertical spacing to two millimeters I'm going to get the same equal two millimeters going both directions now we also have the ability to control the start angle which is here it's at zero I could change that to be let's say 45 puts my crystals on a 45 degree angle and then I have my slant angle which is currently set at 90 which is what creates this 90 degree little green angle here if I change my slant angle to let's say be um, half of that 45 that's gonna move that angle over and it basically it starts to overlap the rows of the stitches or of the crystals I guess in this case so that's with rectangle those are the settings that I can control now if I change it from rectangle to let's say circular now the first thing is because I've changed the offset and the spacing in rectangular it's going to remember those changes when I switch to circular it won't return to what would be considered the default settings um, but if I created a new object it would always start with the default settings it's just as I change these numbers the software um, tries to remember that so I can go ahead and take them away or change them again so if I want to change the offset to be zero I just type in the number zero If I want to change the horizontal spacing to be kind of back to that default of one I can change that too um, I can also control the start angle which we had set to 45 I can put that back to zero and the number of steps now this is something specific for circular and it talks about how many times does it go around the shape one two three four five six and if I was to turn this number up um, or down it would con it would add more steps so why don't we take it down to five and you can see we get more if I take it down again to four you can see that you get a different pattern as well so following around in a circle but I get to control the horizontal spacing the number of steps and the starting angle now if I change it to be let's say contour now I control the offset but I only have I have the vertical spacing and the horizontal spacing so right now my vertical spacing is at 2 if I change that back down to 1 you'll see that it'll actually put in more rows contouring around my shape if I turn the horizontal spacing to 2 
It's going to put more distance between the crystals along my rows, turn the vertical spacing up to whatever three, takes out rows. So um, if you had a crystal that wasn't round, you also have the follow angle, which I guess if you had maybe something like a heart-shaped crystal, this might be um, appropriate because it would turn your heart to follow your line for contour. It's much more appropriate when you're talking about um, the array fill, that this we, we need this quite often in the, in the array fill. And these settings are very similar to doing array fills. Now that's contour fill, we've got single line, and then in this case, I basically just control the horizontal spacing and the overlap. And same thing if we go to line fit, I'm going to control the offset, and I'm going to control the horizontal spacing. So if I want to, I can change the horizontal spacing to be 3, and it goes to 3. So it makes basically rows and columns with line fit. Now, um, going back to, let's say, rectangle for a minute, if you want to control these crystals more visually, you see we've been making all the adjustments mathematically using the numbers here, but when you, this green angle line can also be used to control um, all of these settings. And so to do that, first of all, I need to have my object selected. Then I choose this tool here called Edit Shape Nodes. And notice when I turn on Edit Shape Nodes that that green angle line got um, like little bullets or little handles that I could mouse over and connect and control. So for example, um, if I choose this little um, handle right here, I can control, first of all, the, um, the slant angle. So see how I can control, and I can also control the vertical spacing. So the further I pull this away, the more vertical spacing, and then the angle for the overlapping rows is controlled by this amount that I overlap that, and I can take it this way. So it really becomes up to me to decide how to make this appear. And I can do it much more visually using these lines. Now the, the bottom line I can use to control the horizontal spacing and the start angle. So start angle is right now set at zero. If I want to, I can change it to be on a different angle. Um, if I want to change the spacing along the rows, I can pull this to create sort of longer spacing. So yeah, you can see that I have the ability to really quite visually control the way the appearance of this rectangle fill and it's the same if I choose circular fill now I can control um, the number of steps by just pulling this um, top angle line I create more steps if I go to the bottom one I can control the starting angle and the horizontal spacing so it gives us that ability to control these things sort of more visually so if I go to contour, same idea, except for this time, instead of controlling, I can control the horizontal spacing with this line here, and I can control the vertical spacing with this line here, how many I get. And let's see what's left. Single line, I don't really have the ability to control those. It needs to be done sort of mathematically. And line fit, same thing. It's based on them mathematically. So. That's how you can fill in your shape with crystals and how you can outline your shape with crystals. Now, um, something else about crystals that we can learn just a little bit more um, sometimes, and you get into sort of irregular shapes with crystals. And I think what I'll do, I'm just going to choose new, next, and we'll go with um, from a file, and I'll select. Um, a graphic that just has a couple colors in it and one that I know I've demonstrated is this one here with the heart and we looked at this already filling this in with crystals so I'll just go ahead and create an embroidery design based on this and maybe select it and make it a little bit larger so there's room to fill it in with crystals nicely and then we're gonna zoom in select this blue color take the outline off and then fill that in with crystals. Now, if I go that shape fit, if I go with, let's say, contour, it gives me a different appearance. And what I wanted to look at is 
sometimes if I look very closely at my crystals, okay, you have the actual crystal itself, and then you have the little bit of distance around it, and this is where um, the actual cutter is going to cut your template, and then when you have the template cut out, you are, the crystals actually get sort of placed on top of your template and they fall into the holes that are cut by the cutter out of your crystal template. And so that's a process that we're going to do after we do our layout, we're going to create this template. Um, but what you need to watch out for is sometimes you get an area like right here where the crystals are very close together. And sometimes, depending on the complexity of your shape and the settings that you use, they may even be touching. Now, um, one thing that you can do, and I believe it's under the View drop-down menu, let me see here, Overlapping Crystals. I can turn this on. And what happens now, if I zoom in over part of the design like I can see right here, anytime I have an area where I have two crystals that are overlapping, and if it's just, um, if the actual crystals are overlapping, I get a red X. If just the cutting over the cutting lines overlap, I get a yellow X. And so that tells us that it, within this design that we've created, there's a few areas that need some attention before they would be suitable for sending to your cutter to create your template. And so while it's set right now as an object with a crystal um, fill done in contour, I can, can change this, oh, maybe you want to try contour, why don't we try line or single line, and then it'll kind of fill it in with just a single line. Oh, maybe you don't like single line, maybe you like to try rectangle or whatever. And once you find the one that you like, why don't we try circular? So whatever pattern you choose, you still have the ability to change that, and we have the ability, even within contour, to change things like the spacing that may correct some of these issues. But sometimes you want to do it, you want the ability to just make some fine-tune adjustments. So for example, this would be a good situation where it's mostly good, but there's a few areas that I need to deal with, and I can tell that because of the X's that are coming up on my crystals. Now that's where using this separate to crystals option comes in handy. Um, but remember that once you apply separate to crystals, you no longer have this object set as a crystal fill where you can change the contour to rectangle again or whatever. So I'm going to go ahead and choose separate to crystals now. And what you can see is it's taken what was one piece of fill that was all done with crystals and made each crystal an individual object that I could then select. So um, just as an example, if I zoom in here over this sort of troubled area and click on one of these crystals, see how I can select it, and then I could move it. And see, it no longer has an issue because I separated it far enough away from the other crystals that I corrected the issue. So we would need to go around this design and just find all of the crystals, and I can do it with my hand, or if I want to select a crystal and just use my arrow key on my keyboard, to move it ever so gently and slightly away from itself until I get rid of that little X pattern. So you can zoom out, zoom in every time you find an area where there's crystals that need to be fixed, then just move them apart to fix the, the situation. So you can see here that there's not too many, but there was just a few areas that needed to be addressed. And so that was the principle was that w we would use separate to crystals to be able to select an individual crystal and move them apart like I am now. So, but once I've done that, remember that I no longer have the ability to change these crystals from contour fill to line fit or whatever other style, you know, that you may choose to use. So. You kind of need to get it to the point where you're, you're happy with the way it is, and if there is some small areas such as what I have now, then you can choose that separate to crystals and just tweak those few little um, areas to be perfect. So there, I think I've corrected all of the areas in this design that had little yellow or little red crosses on them, and so I think this would now be safe to apply with um, crystals, or sorry, to, to the cutting machine to, to use with crystals. Now, you you've, that was moving the crystals just to solve 
you know, some sort of an issue, but maybe you decide you'd like to control it. Maybe you want to go in now and insert some more crystals to fill in some areas that didn't get crystals. So I could come over here to my tool and choose to insert, and this is the crystal shape tool, and I, now I can literally insert a crystal just by clicking. So see how I could kind of go in and say, well, you know, there's room for a few more crystals in my shape, and I just have to very carefully place them where I want them, and it looks really nice. So that's something that you can do, and I think getting zoomed in helps to do this. So, oh, see, as soon as I added that one, I could tell I got an issue to deal with there. Oh, got another issue to deal with there. So now I'm getting to be too close. Um, so maybe I'll stop adding crystals and go ahead and... So I'll stop making crystals and go ahead and select these individual crystals and just move them apart to try and correct these issues. Or perhaps I need to just delete that crystal that I've added and say, okay, I'm happy with it now. So that's how it works with this creating crystals. And yeah, I think I've covered as many of the things as I need to talk about in this section. Um, I think you might want to watch it again, just review, because I showed a lot of different functionality in terms of how to create the crystals. Um, but that's in general, so maybe I'll just recap for you. So we'll go back to the original design that just had the simple shape. And you have the ability to create a shape, select that shape, and either apply crystals to the outline of the shape or crystals to the fill of the shape. And you can change um, the color or style of the crystal with your drop down lists. You can um, choose when you have a crystal fill from the different styles of fill rectangle circle um, once you choose your style you can change those things the way they appear um, mathematically using the settings here or if you choose this tool here edit shape nodes you could zoom in and do it a little bit more visually by just playing with the angles until you get them to the point where you're happy with them and then if you have any issues with your crystals, you can check that by going to the view and overlapping crystals option. And then it'll show you all of the crystals that are overlapping, whether it be overlapping yellow crosses says that the cut lines overlap, red crosses says that the actual crystals are on top of each other. And that's a situation where you may want to use separate the crystals to make each individual crystal selectable move where you could then move it um, to a different location and um, correct these you know issues where there's the red and yellow X's so okay that's my segment about creating um, fills and outlines using the crystals in the artistic crystal software